my passion and interest with the car industry started because my uncle, um, when I was younger, uh, he was worked for Rover, and throughout that time he brought home the latest cars, and some of which he designed bits for. Um, so when I was, you know, in, in my teenage years, I, I wanted to do what my uncle did, and that was car design, as well as being wanted and wanted to be an artist. So here in the studio, you've got a range of all pop band colour. Uh, you've got a full-on working scale electrics with a range of uh, range of cars. The uh, Hot Wheels collection, the ever-growing Hot Wheels and Matchbox collection. Um, so you have got the cars over here. You've got some of the more scale electric cars over here. Uh, this is the shop area where you can. Uh, there's an example of each of the. Uh, brands that I've painted, so generally A to Z. So when I was at school, um, everybody has an opportunity to do work experience, and normally you try and contact a you know a friend, a relative to to work out a week of being somewhere relevant to what you thought you could do as a, a job or want to do as a job. So um, I I contacted my uncle and said, look, potentially I'm interested in car design and um, what that involves. Um, Fantastic week, amazing week. Uh, the funniest thing was that I had to write a diary and I, I couldn't actually write anything or about what I'd seen. So I saw, I saw the Mini before it was actually the Mini. It was like a pre-production uh, with a big, you know, with a big face show with a big clock in the middle. Um, but it was a fantastic week. But after that week, kind of, kind of realised that car design really isn't what I want to do. You don't design. You, you, Generally, you don't design the whole car, and I kind of was like, oh, I kind of want to do the whole car. So yeah, so I, I wanted a more creative, more messy uh, thing to do as a, you know, to, to start my my career really. So illustration seemed a a, a starting point um, to that. So with illustration, after the first year, it came quite apparent it wasn't going to be. Illustration was a, a kind of a dying career. You, it was much more kind of computer-led. So um, I, uh, illustration at my college was upstairs, fine art was downstairs, and I found that fine art this was this experimental, fun area, which I, I thought I connected with. I was like, I want to do that. Um, and that led to me going uh, to apply for, for fine art rather than illustration at university. The second year of that course, uh, you were able to go and do um, Go to your, you know, travel, you know, so you had to do a, a university exchange. So, um, so I ended up going out to to the Riga Mac Class Academy, which is the the Riga Academy of Art, essentially. Um, and it was in the mid middle of the city, and I was able to to try new things in a very traditional setting. Uh, one of the things I did notice whilst I was out there was in the middle of the city, like being in a bit like London, but not quite as big is that there's a lot of cars. There's a lot of this kind of car culture about. And being an ex-Soviet state, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a certain wealth there as well. Um, so you start seeing like these modified cars, you start seeing stuff like Panameras and you know, all that kind of high-end stuff. Yeah, I saw Land Rovers and Range Rovers out there and I thought, well, they're built in Sully Hall, where, I'm, where, where I live. So there's this kind of like, rather than getting homesick, I was like, oh, well, clearly this brand has travelled here as well. Yeah, it, it was the first time I'd been away from home, you know, from when I was, you know, a young, you know, a, I, was, I was, what, 19 then? So, well, maybe 18. So I was like, I was, it was a, a big thing for me to go and do and, and enjoy and, and take in. And, and as a creative, taking in all this, this influence and this car culture and what was going on around me influenced my, my artwork I was creating as well. Bit of F1 and bike stuff over here. Uh, DeLorean artworks, so that's the original for that, uh, with some splitters and bumpers from touring cars. This is the original pop band colour sculpture, so you can kind of see it all connected and put together. I'd seen that Land Rovers had travelled from Solihull to Latvia. So, I, what I wanted to do when I was travelling around Latvia, I had got a toy, a toy freelander. And everybody I had met, I got them to sign the Land Rover. So it was a bit like a, a document, a diary of people. And there was also a book that had their name and what job they did in this book that supported all the signatures on this car. 
and there's this quite this pleasant thing of people enjoyed kind of creating and writing their name on it. So I've got these covered, these cars covered in signatures of people I've met. And I, I think that was the idea I was having is that, that Land Rover had travelled and I was travelling, but I was travelling with a miniature Land Rover as well, I think. So I thought I'd write my dissertation on, on Land Rovers. Not being a, I'm not a film buff, um, but I like, quite like the idea of how how the brand features in films and how it show, showcases the, the car and also what the, um, what the car does for characters. But I'm not a great writer. I've, yeah, that's another thing, I'm, not, I'm much better at visuals than, than, than writing. Uh, but it, you know, it got me my, my degree, that was, the, that, was, that was the main thing. Uh, practically, I, I was also using the toy cars I decided I'd cut up all my die-cast toy cars and scale electric cars and slot cars and that I had from my childhood and cut them all up and create a sculpture. So Pop Bang Colour, Pop Bang is a friendly explosion of colour. That's where the name comes from and it's condensed down to Pop Bang Colour. And that's what I called my final degree show uh, with this hanging sculpture that, um, that had motors and lights and things moving in it and uh, yeah and that's that's where it kind of stuck you know that was 2004 so uh yeah that was my my degree show so i graduated in 2004 uh, i got first class honors which is great it's for exactly what i wanted to get um and then i just at that point i was like i'm kind of i'm exhausted i i i kind of got to that point and got what I wanted. And it was like, after that, well, what, what is there after university? And I ended up going, right, well, I guess I'm going home then. <laughs> so from Winchester, uh, you know, I, I went back to, back to Birmingham. And parents were like, great, you, yeah, great, you've got a degree, but you kind of need a job. Uh, I, I had been working bars when I was at university. Uh, so naturally, the, you know, the easiest thing to, to kind of to go into was, um, was bar management. And so I started working in a nightclub uh, for, for a couple of years. I did it, really enjoyed it, great social atmosphere, but not very creative when you're slicing <laughs> limes and making cocktails. Well, cocktails are quite creative. I was good at cocktails, mojitos, great. At that same time, I, the good thing about nightclubs was there was a lot of DJs, and DJs, they could never get photos of themselves at the decks. And so I, I took photos. I took photos of them behind the decks, and one of the photos that I took was of Steve Miller, um, and he was having an album. And so I, I pho photographed him at the decks. He really liked a photo that I'd taken um, of him. And he then used it on his album cover, which, you know, back in the day, album, you know, an album, going to take, you go to your local record store and get an album. That was like wicked. So I got this and at that point, the, the, my manager was like, well, Ian, it's quite clear that, you know, bar work isn't what you want to do. You want to be a creative. So I... I started teaching, so initially three hours and then up to nine hours and then I was pretty much a full-time teacher for, for the next two years, but it kept me creative and it meant I could be in the studios, I could you know, be doing you know, uh, all kinds of printing techniques, I could get use different materials I hadn't had access to before and also when the kids weren't there during the summer, I, could, I had access to studios, I could, big studios as well. Um, so it came up to Christmas of one year, um, and I, yeah, my, my, my girlfriend of that, of that, of that time, um, she was really big up this present. She was like, you're gonna love this. It was like, it was like the, the, the crescendo, the, the best present, and it was, it was quite quite big present. And uh, I was like, great. And then I kind of pressed it, and it was like, you know, plasticky at the top, and I'm like, I've no idea what this is. And then I opened it up, and it was a Lightning McQueen, radio control car. There, there wasn't, there, I still don't really know why I got it. And it was, it was really bigged up as like, this is your main Christmas present. And I was like, I didn't want to feel like I was disappointed because it was, it was a nice thought, but there wasn't any kind of like reason. I, I can't remember we ever had a conversation say, I really want a radio control Lightning McQueen for Christmas, please. Don't remember that conversation. Around here, so you've got caps, you've got lanyards, 
from all the events that I've been at and attended. Um, so they're kind of collected down here. This VW camper is my brother's, uh, but it drove his rings down the aisle for his wedding as well. That's what I, uh, that's what I did. Um, caps over here. Got a commission that's nearly ready to go out, needs a bit of adjustment to it. Uh, here is like the chill talk area, so you can have meetings here. Uh, we've got trusty Gran Turismo on here as well, so you can, can you know, come in and have a, a game of Gran Turismo. Again, more prints on on display. So she she gave me this car, this radio control Lightning McQueen. Uh, but the one she said to me is, "Don't take it down to the studio and don't get paint on it." And I thought, that's a good idea. Okay. Hmm. So, s sadly, that, that, that ended. Um, but I, my, my, my granddad, um, at, at that time, he, he, he could see I was frustrated with not being able to paint, not, not being in a position to, to be able to create stuff. Um, so we converted my parents' garage into a, a makeshift Studio. Well, not much. It was a very much a studio. So, so I ended up taking said radio control car down to the studio and then working out actually how do you how do you paint with a radio control car. And in my small studio, I was able to do little experiments. Tying, um, I put felt tips on the back of the car, so push the felt tip. Um, I did inks. Uh, I put paint. I, I strapped paint pots to the top of the car. Um, but that was that was the uh, you know, early early experiments of of painting with with cars. So as a teacher, you had half terms, and part of the half term is you should be marking really lots of work. I didn't enjoy that. So um, there's there's a there's a, an opportunity uh, given by Wolverhampton City Council to to take over a shop unit. So um, I took uh, took this shop over for a week. I was painting away and people were watching me on their lunch break whilst I was painting with cars. There was no big advertising or you know, anything in the window saying, watch this. It was kind of like people were naturally inquisitively looking at what I was, what I was doing. And I thought, well, if it's interesting, for the, for, interesting enough for them to stop and look, I'll contact the local media and press to, to get them down here to, to, to see what I'm doing. Um, so I just rang through, you know, BBC, ITV, uh, local newspapers, national newspapers, which then led on to, to go nationally. So this went out into the Metro newspaper. And, and the kids who I was teaching were coming in with the paper going, why are you, on, why are you in the paper? And I was like, I'm an artist. <laughs> I paint the cars, that's what I do. Um, so yeah, it started to get this kind of snowballing effect of, okay, this, this could be something in which could interest people beyond a shopping centre in Wolverhampton. So then I painted Pudsy Bear for Children in Need, live on Breakfast Radio. Again, got a bit more local you know, press media about it. This led on to going on to, to doing shows and events. So my first event was at the, at the British Motor Museum, which was then Gaiden at that time. But um, I did a, a, a Land Rover event there. So I started painting. My first car artworks were, were Land Rovers. And then I started to go through the events calendar, like yeah, just getting magazines, events, see what events were coming up. Um, I saw I got Bewley, so the National Car Museum down uh, down south. I did a, a I did a portrait of Lord Montagu, and then from doing that, I then contacted. I saw this thing called the Festival of Speed with Goodwood. I thought, oh, seems a big event. It's listed in all the magazines. Um, so I rang Goodwood. They were like, okay, well, how much do you cost? I was like, oh, okay. Cool, I'm being, being paid to do do this, or yeah, you know, I paid a, 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 a little amount, but it was it was cool. I was like, right, good, but I'll, I'll try this. Um, that year it was Hawthorne to Hamilton, so Lewis Hamilton was doing really well for McLaren at that time, you know, uh, and so the the whole event was named you know Hawthorne, you know, Mike Hawthorne to Lewis Hamilton, and uh, so I was yeah, you know, all the artworks I was to do were either Goodwood related or Hawthorne or Hamilton. Uh, I painted. Mike Hawthorne, I painted a portrait of Lewis Hamilton, a portrait of um, Lord March, um, and I did the start finish straight as well of, of Goodwood. So I painted this portrait of Lewis Hamilton, uh, which went really well. I'm not a portrait artist, I'm a car artist, but portraits is like, uh, I do it as a bit of a performance piece. Yeah, people like portraits. Two weeks on from that, 
well, I went back to Birmingham, took the artworks back, again, got some more local press in the Birmingham Mail. And then I was teaching and I, my boss said that the Birmingham Mail newspaper had been in touch and that they had had uh, Saatchi, MC Saatchi, ringing them to, to get hold of me. And I thought, well, am I in trouble? Have I broken copyright here? Have I done something which... So what it turns out that they wanted to, to use me for, for an advertising campaign. So they, they were representing Reebok uh, and they wanted me to paint a portrait of Lewis, but as an athlete for Reebok. And they were like, how big can you paint? And at that time I was painting two and a half meters by a meter and a half. Um, I was like, I don't know, went, went for a meeting. Uh, I thought it was all very bizarre. I thought it was all, almost like, um, like you've been framed, kind of like it was a setup. I generally thought it was a setup. I was going to pop out and go, huh, only joking. Um, 12 is my lucky number. I always, it's always been there, 12 is a number. Um, so I worked out that um, 12 metres by 8 metres was a, a doable size. No idea how big that was. I thought 12 by 8 sounds good. Well, I went back home, I said to Dad, like, how, how big is 12 metres, like, roughly? And he was like, yeah, that's, that's the size of a three-story building. That's, that's big. And it was one of, at that time, the idea was one of five ideas. And eventually it became my, you know, the idea that they wanted to go through and do it. Um, so I ended up painting this, this portrait um, of Lewis, uh, the, you know, which then hung next to Tower Bridge in London. The weekend that he was then crowned F1 world champion for the first time. So this huge portrait was in London, global coverage. You know, people from all over the world were filming me create it, the story of it, why we were doing it. This is prior to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram as social media. Yes, yeah, so it was all it was all very much TV led, TV yeah, new news led. Um, and yeah, so I painted this this job with the cars, yeah, solely with, with radio control cars, created a portrait of, of Lewis Hampton. Old and used cars uh, ran here. Is one of the artworks that was on Top Gear on the on the art special, the silk cut, um, and then you also got all one well all, but a lot of the controllers um, that from different cars that I've I've uh, bought over the different years. I don't use these controllers; these are just for wall pieces. So more the the more kind of bizarre stuff that I've done is that I've got the Guinness World Record for the world's largest glow in the dark artwork, which was painted with a real car, which also was glow in the dark too. So um, over a period of four days uh, last year, we we painted. When I say we, it was me, <laughs> but I had to guide the car while somebody else drove the car over a huge piece of canvas, which is 207 square meters, to then create an image of a Nissan Leaf. So it was a leaf painted with a leaf, uh, which was also glow in the dark. But we, we smashed it, we, yeah, we, we broke that guilt, uh, the, 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 um, the Guinness World Record, um, which was a super cool thing to do. So some, some personal highlights of where my artwork has been seen or, you know, people may have seen it um, a couple of years ago uh, when, they were, when Top Gear were looking for, for some car art, they selected my artwork to be, to be featured. So they rang me out of blue to say, you know, have you got any artwork um, available to, to, to be displayed? And I was like, yes. So that featured on the on the art special where they went up to uh, a, gal a gallery in Middlesbrough and they took over a gallery and filled it with car art. So I had three artworks featured in that episode. And because my artworks are so big, they're two and a half meters by a meter and a half, they were the most kind of seen artworks compared to smaller stuff. Here is my this is my studio, this is the studio area, the creation area. So you just got the Santa Pod artwork down there, which is the 50th anniversary artwork completed recently. So that's uh, going off to the printers and framers tomorrow. They obviously got all the different stuff I use, the radio control cars, the tires and the wheels. So it's all within this area. Then over there, you've got the desk and where I work. So it's kind of all the uh, all those things are planned over there. Another another artwork that was that's kind of caught people's you know, attention, as it were, um, is I painted the, the Senna movie uh, artwork for the launch of the DVD. 
So I did that at Autosport, where they had all of Senna's cars on display also. So I thought it was very relevant artwork to create. I think also I learned there, well, I've, I've always had social media. I've always been on Twitter and, you know, and whatnot. Um, but particularly at that event when so many people were, were talking about it online, as well as, you know, me posting photos of it, but also people generally just being interested in this creation throughout the day on that on that Saturday. There was such a buzz about it. And still today, for me, it's an artwork that I look back on and go, yeah, I'm so glad I did it at that particular time. Because all these artworks are created at a particular time and they're all relevant for that time. It's such a personal thing to create this stuff. And it, you know, when you're creating it in four, six, nine, 12, 15, 30 hours, generally you can remember how you felt about it and you, you know, what mood you were in or what was going on at that time or what circuit you were at or what the weather was like. You know, I mean, just a few weeks ago, I was painting at Silverstone um, and for the first time in, in eight years, it's not, you know, I've never painted when it's snowing. <laughs> like, you know, to go, yeah, I painted this artwork and it was snowing at the time. It's a very important part of, of the sensation of being an artist is that you're not creating something that's private. Often it's stuff that's done in public and for people to enjoy and interact with as well. So would I change anything? No, I think, I think it's been a genuine journey. Like I've learned a lot. Um, a lot of stuff has happened that you know, I haven't expected that I've really enjoyed doing. And there's been some really tough times as well, like some really tough stuff that you've, you know, as a person, as a business, you, you learn along the way. But had I not have had those, those ups and downs, then I wouldn't be in the position I am now, because you've, you've got to learn from it all. See some of the toy, you know, some of the paintbrushes here that need a bit of a clean up in the not so distant future. And then over here, just uh, bits of more Hot Wheels collection. And uh, yeah, that's about about the studio really. Lots of things I've collated. There's, a, there's a, another bonnet that's been sprayed up that's gonna go outside. That's done by a graffiti artist. And, uh, and yeah, hope you like it.